Hey everyone, I am back with another quick tutorial on how to sublimate your tumblers. I've been getting a lot of questions about how I wrap my tumblers to get them to appear very seamless down the sides and also to have very little to no ghosting around the top and the bottoms. Um, so I figured I would go ahead and make you a quick video to show my wrapping techniques for you. So I start printing my image at a 9.36 by an 8 inches. Um, and then I will cut my border on the left and the top border on the top here completely off. So there's only the right side border and the bottom border. And the reasoning I do this is because I will take my image, I'll turn it upside down and backwards, um, and have my tumbler also upside down. So it'll look like this when you're wrapping. Um, you'll go there, so you'll start with wrapping your tumbler. And you always want the ink printed side down. Otherwise, if you have the white side down, you're gonna have a huge line of white because ink is not on this, it's over here. So ink side down first, and you will overlap onto that side. And then you'll take your tumbler, you'll turn it upside down, just kind of tap it a little bit, make sure that it's all the way down. And make sure it's very tight. I like to kind of push my ink side in first and just wrap very, very, very tightly, almost as if the paper is going to tear, um, kind of should how it, how it should feel. Wrap it right along like that. And then I like to turn it around because I can see right there where the end of the image is, which is why I'd like to keep it a smidge long for that purpose. Because then also right here, you can see if your image is lined up at the bottom also. And if that is not lined up, your seam is not gonna line up and the imaging is gonna look off. So you can kind of go through and adjust that to make sure that that's lined up as well. And then go back and retighten the image. So I kind of pushed it down a little bit so you'd see a little bit better where it's more lined up. But you want to try to get it up as lined up as possible um, to make sure that the image is going to line up around the seam. So you want to push that back in, make sure it's flat. And then I like to do after that just another quick pull to make sure that it's still tight and double check my seam. I double check everything about five times because I like to make sure that it's down properly. Um, quick tip, I like to have my little tapes already pre-cut. Um, that way you don't have to try to hold your tape and cut and hold your tumbler all at the same time. Um, so with this one, it's just a first heat resistant tape. I pull on that side and you're going to have it on the side that you're overlapping and pulling towards you. And you're gonna pull, you're gonna hold that down and pull that tight to make sure that it's keeping the paper tight. So you'll have an image like that for now. And it's just one little strip right in the middle. Make sure everything is still lined up around this, uh, the upper and lower. It's still very lined up around the seam there, you can see, hopefully. And then with this next part, you're gonna tape your bottom and your upper. And with that, I like to just kinda make sure we pull that really good and tight. And same technique with the tape. Overlapping side gets taped and pull towards you. Now that's gonna make sure that it's down. And then you're gonna do the same with the upper. So just make sure it's down really well. And this way I'm gonna turn it just cause it's easier to hold it that way. 
And again, on this, the overlap side, pulling away from whichever way it's going from you. And you pull those pretty tight. I like to hold my tape here and pull really tight on the other side. That way you're not just pulling your tape off. So that's what you should have right now. Looks like that. You'll see there's some little open spots there, but we will take care of that here right now. And with that, you're gonna use a longer piece of tape um, that's gonna go right down your seam. And yes, I do have mine a little bit longer just so I can actually hold it. And with this, what you're gonna do is your overlap side here. You're gonna put half of the tape all the way down on the overlap side. Just like so. And don't make, make sure it doesn't go quite over to the other side yet because you're gonna be pulling and manipulating it to make sure that's down all the way. So it should look like this. You're holding it up, but it's taped on the overlap side. And also try to make sure you're not bending all this over here and I'll go over that reason why shortly. So now that you have that on the overlap side, like so, what you're gonna do, it doesn't matter which end you start at, but again, make sure it's down really well on that side and that you're pulling just kind of incrementally the all the way up or down, whichever way you're starting and just really kind of slowly flattening it, kind of doing like a, a rub over and that way you're making sure it's all down and that there's no creases in the tape because the creases are what is going to cause air pockets and the air pockets is what causes the ghosting effect. Um, which is just another term for part of the image didn't get transferred. Um, so you have like little white speckles where your seam should be or around the, the rim or the bottom. So just taking your time, really going through here. I'm getting that all the way up. Just like that. Then just kind of rub it down. Gently for now, we'll work on it more later so now you should look like this and like i said i leave mine over overlapped a little bit um, for end purposes when you're done it's easier to pull off instead of trying to find that little uh lift area and burning your fingers um if you're like me and don't cool them off right away i take mine off um as they're coming out of the oven so that's how you should be at the moment Three little tapes through there, and then one long tape all the way down your seam. At this point, you should see, and I hope you guys can see here what I'm talking about. You'll have some overlaps. Uh, it'll be more of an opaque white right here, and then kind of more see-through here, which is gonna create a seam. So I hope you can see that. Um, you'll be able to feel it. It's kind of like a lip where the paper is overlapping the paper on the inside. Um, and here, if you haven't heard people saying, use your nail to flatten the seam down, it's a huge tip and it really does help. And this is what they're referring to. So that that's a seam right there. And there is an air pocket there right now as it sits. So if you don't do anything to it, you're likely gonna get that ghosting effect. So what you're gonna do, you can take your nail, a credit card. Um, I use my little Cricut scraper sometimes, depending on my nails. Um, so you're gonna go through, find that seam, and you're gonna run your nail all up and along that seam really well. And that's gonna scrap, um, scrape out or push out that air that's right there and it's gonna flatten the image against the tumbler very well. That way the image is sitting right against the tumbler in all spots. If you think about it, it's kind of like if you take a colored marker and a paper, you're not gonna be getting any ink on the paper unless the, the pen is actually touching that paper, then the ink will transfer. If it's hovering over it, it's not gonna do anything for you. So that's why we wanna make sure it's really nice and down flat against 
the tumbler. And if you're using your Cricut scraper, same thing. It'll just look much more defined when you're doing it and that's what you want as long as it's getting done. That's the first one. <clears throat> the second one, so there is two, make sure you do both of them. One and the, the seam right under your tape is the second one. You're gonna wanna do that. Same thing, take your nail, really, really, really scrub it and scrape it so that it looks like a very defined line and that way you know it's down. And don't worry if you have fur baby sprinkles in there, it'll happen as long as it's not on the actual tumbler itself. So, and then once you're done with that, you should have just really defined kind of lines in those areas if you can see them, I hope you can. So that's what they're talking about when they're saying run your nail down the seam lines to get the air pockets out. Once I've done that, I take the next step to make sure the pockets are really out and just really scrape it along there, like really, really well. And then once you have that done, and that's typically the only heat tape I will use. Um, you can wrap it if you would like. Sometimes I do, it just kind of depends, again, on my image or what I'm trying to do. Um, so you can wrap it, it doesn't hurt, it just gives it a little extra um, force with pressure. So now that you're at this point, move my clipper out of the way. The next step I do is actually not with the heat resistant tape, I use two different kinds of tapes. And then over the heat resistant tape, I use painter's tape. Um, it just, I feel like it sticks better, it holds better, and it's stronger, so it's going to stay better. So I always pre-fold mine, it's just easier to get it. You can clip that end off, like so. And for this part, for the seam of it, again, you just need one that's width length through, so like that. And same thing, it's kind of a double step, but again, it's gonna really make sure your seams are down. This one, you're gonna, same thing, just right over the heat resistant tape. So right over, directly over it. And I also still, same thing, just that's a little bit wider than the actual tumbler. And we're gonna just lay it right over. And I like to sit, do this kind of the same thing. One side first. <clears throat> and then slowly lay the other side down and that way you're not getting those air pockets. So it should look like that for now. And also in this method you're using a lot less tape instead of like taping the whole thing 20 times. You don't need to do that unless you really want to. That's totally up to you. I'm not telling you what to do or how to do it, but in my opinion, you don't, you don't need to do it. Um, same thing though, again, uh, just double stepping it. Um, I go back through again and just scrape those seams just one more time for the extra effect. Right through there. Especially up here towards the top. So you're gonna really rub it in there. Like that. Over here, it's not overlapped, so you don't need to worry about it unless it is overlapped. And then same thing, I go through and I re-scrape it again, just to make sure air pockets are out. Because that will be the biggest thing is if you have air pockets. So it should look smooth, flat. You don't want little wrinkles. Um, you want your little line margins um, to be defined right there on both of them. So you should be at this point by now if you're following along. And again, I like to fold my little tape sides in. It just helps when you're coming back and taking off your tape. You're not fighting with the little picking at it. All right, so from this step here, take my tape and I actually don't take it off yet. So I don't cut it. I will hold it um, just like this. 
And I will explain here in just a moment why, if I can get it to stay still and cooperate. So you're going to line up this part of the tape here along the top rim and just over this as much as possible. So it should be very lined up with that top rim and making sure you don't have any bubbles in that area. And if you do, again, just scrape it out, not a big deal. At this part, I do recommend some form of scraper, be it a Cricut, a credit card, a piece of cardboard, just something to scrape. Um, and this is why, if you don't tape your fingers together. Um, so from here, all the way until you're done wrapping this part, I will take it and just do this. And that is making sure that it's flat and very tight against the rim. Pull it out and keep going. This part you do wanna take your time because this is the part where you're making sure you're not getting that ghosting or that faded look at the rim and also the bottom once we get there. So if you're not doing heat resistant tape under this part, I would do two layers of this. If you have the resistant um, heat resistant tape under there, uh, one is just fine. For the sake of just time saving at the moment, um, I'm just gonna do the one layer. Once you get there, just back over to that seam. I'll cut it and do a little fold. And that just helps when you're coming back to unfold it instead of trying to fight with the, the picking at it. So you can do that. Same thing, take your tape. And it's gonna be the same thing except for on the bottom where you have that overlap. You're going to want to make sure you're just over, not taping your image together, uh, you're just over the tumbler and not all the way extended to the end of it. So mine's about right, right there. And then same thing, just smoothing it out as you go. And the more practice you do, the better you're gonna get. Um, also, this is kind of the same thing as using um, those bands that people maybe mention. Um, I just find it to be less expensive and more cost effective. We all know how expensive this hobby is, if it's a hobby or if you're just trying to get something started. Um, it's just a little bit more financially it's a better choice <laughs> but if you like the bands awesome if they work for you awesome too <laughs> so same thing you're done with the tape for now and fold it on over so everything should be super smooth like super super smooth no bubbles uh, making sure everything's just flat and tight so now that you have your um, your upper and your lower taped, you're gonna wanna do the same thing. Find those seams and make sure that it's um, really rubbed down on both of them. Okay, so once you do that, Again, it's just a lot of scraping, but this is what's gonna keep you from getting those ghosting images. And once you do it and practice, it's gonna be a lot quicker. Like you'll just zoom right through it, get the next one done. Um, it just takes practice is all. Okay, so once you've got really good scraped out everywhere, just scrape, scrape, scrape until you think you're done scraping and then scrape a little bit more and then, you, and then you're done. So, 
that's how it should look that's how i do mine and that's how i get the very kind of seamless look um on the top bottom and then that would actually be the seam right there and that's the front of it so from here you would just throw it in your uh, oven press whatever your preference is or whatever equipment you have um the thing i have found that works for me and you guys are probably wondering what about your ends i leave them um because if you flop it over, lay it over, scrunch it, whatever, it puts a void in the areas. I don't know if you can really see that very well. I'm sorry if you can't, but can you kind of see where it looks like raggedy instead of just straight? So that's actually gonna lift up parts of the image and it's not gonna be pressed as tight as it needs to be. And that is what causes the ghost image um, or the lack of putting in the image onto the, the tumbler. So I leave mine straight because there's already so much pressure on here. It's flat and it's going to go all the way down. And that is what I found that works best for me. Um, again, if something works better for you, that's perfectly fine. Um, but this has been a pretty fail safe way for me to do um, my wrapping. So if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave them in the bottom um, down below. If this helped, if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to help support my channel. Um, if there's any other videos you would like to see, uh, again, comment in the bottom and like and subscribe. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting.